So I'm here in beautiful central Kentucky, the rolling hills of the bluegrass. I'm at uh, the intersection of 127 and 898 north of Frankfurt. The National Geodetic Survey Station here was PT41 Reset, which is at an elevation of 825 feet. I looked for the grass survey marker, I couldn't find it, so I've uh, set up a temporary station at this location, and uh, we'll be shooting from here, I believe on 40 feet east, and 10 feet south of uh, the actual location where the, the station might have been. I know when they, when they constructed the uh, Black Water Tower, there was a lot of construction in this area. So that gives me the problem that I need uh, to establish a back site, which is true north. And I will do that uh, on an on a upcoming day when there's uh, uh, a lot of uh, visibility at night and I can clearly see Polaris. I will establish from this point a, uh, a true north so that I can uh, take observations on the, the sun and the moon from this point. So this past weekend, August 26, 28, and 30, we attempted to shoot the moon from uh, two locations and from three locations. Uh, we had the help of Alan Hanfield in uh, Alberta, Canada, and he, he was successfully able to take the shots on the moon at that point in time. So we were clouded here at this location and also in Signal Mountain. So, the data that we did have, uh, I've included it on the, uh, the calculation sheets. Uh, the the uh, preliminarily, the, the first thing that becomes obvious to you when you attempt to shoot it in from two locations is that the U.S. Naval Observatory angle uh, of altitude angle and azimuth angle predictions are, uh, are very precise and they're right on and uh, we were able immediately to match up the uh, altitudes with our surveying equipment. I haven't got a handle yet on the, on the azimuths because of the, uh, the lack of site and for other reasons that are due to lack of my, my preparedness for, uh, for running this experiment. Nevertheless, we got, uh, we got a start on it. I'll be publishing the uh, actual shooting in two locations. That would be the third video of three in this series. It will be another month and we have a full moon because I'd, I'd prefer to shoot on one of the, the full moon days. At that point in time, you have a, uh, a completely round target to shoot, and uh, which should be just easier to uh, see. These are really good, good measurement on, it on, on those kinds of days. So, I was able to take uh, the predicted azimuths from the, the uh, Naval Observatory and plug them into the spreadsheet to do a, a calculation on the distance of the moon and that showed basically that uh, we are looking at an object that's at a distance of plus 200,000 miles from the earth. Uh, it's in geocentric orbit. Uh, uh, no one's going to argue those points uh, and the reason for that is if, if there were an argument over it, the, the sailors wouldn't be using it for navigation and the uh, astronomers wouldn't be using it to, uh, to find the objects of the moon and the sun that they're, that they're looking for in the sky. So again, I, I plotted uh, the distance uh, ca calculated to the moon from the Naval Observatory azimuths from six different locations. It comes out to be plus 200,000 miles. Basically, that confirms that you can shoot uh, low 
angles and still arrive at a uh, at a large distance for an object in the sky. So we'll, we'll be uh, dealing with that as we go forward on the solar distance uh, experiment. actual calculations when, we, when we're successfully able to triangulate uh, our field, uh, in another month or two months. So, that being said, uh, in summary, the moon is where the Naval Observatory says that it is, at, at the distance and in the position that it says that it is. Uh, I don't have a problem with that, and most people would expect that to be the case. So, as a curious person, and for uh, continuing the scientific investigation, I'm going to now take the Naval Observatory azimuths and altitudes, and I'm going to put them in the spreadsheet uh, and re re rework the spreadsheet, assuming a flat Earth environment. And I'm doing that because I'd like to see what the, what the mathematics tells us uh, if, if we do that, whether it's possible for those different observations uh, to converge in a location, and if so, what that location would tell us. Uh, and just out of general curiosity, what, what kind of information that would be. So I'm gonna, gonna work up the flat earth calcs. I will put those in uh, video number two of this series and uh, we'll, we'll see where that goes. So I wanna, I wanna say thanks to uh, Alan Hanfield for, for attempting us uh, to shoot in with us at the moon on the, on the 30th of August. I appreciate that. And I'm gonna go uh, forward on, on, on this experiment with the lunar distance and the solar distance, and the solar distance as planned. So I, I hope that uh, you can generate some good information in the, in the files that I'm providing the links to with this video. Thank you very much.